Well, thanks for joining us here for Chaos to Clarity. I'm Bernie Reno. You can follow me on X, formerly Twitter. I'm at AccuReno. The uh, hurricane season continues. We've already had um, uh, uh, Patty and uh, Raphael in uh, November. So we've had two storms, one tropical storm, one hurricane. We're going to get another one. We're going to get Sarah. No doubt about it. As early as Friday, uh, definitely over the weekend, this will become the 12th hurricane of the season, and it will likely become uh, the sixth major hurricane of the season. And it does have a chance to threaten Florida as we head into the middle and latter half of next week. All right, let me show you uh, where this uh, is uh, right now. Um, first of all, let me show you this is where we have our high risk. So this is where we think this is going to develop uh, in here, Western Caribbean, as early as Friday, but especially by the weekend, we're going to have a named storm and we're probably going to have a uh, hurricane. Let me show you the area that we're tracking for you uh, right now. It's right in here. This area of showers and thunderstorms south of Santa Domingo or south of Haiti. Uh, you'll notice that it's kind of disorganized right now. You've got a cluster of thunderstorms here, 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 and here. You know, typically what you're looking for is one cluster of thunderstorms that starts to develop. So it's a little unorganized right now, but I do think that it gets a little better organized as we head toward Wednesday and Thursday. It's going to be helped by this front that's come off the eastern seaboard uh, today. Let me show that to you on the uh, water vapor loop. I'll put this full so you can see it. So let me put this in the in the motion here. So here's the front right in here um, that, that's already pushed off the eastern seaboard. Now what is going to happen is uh, this last little piece of energy up here is going to dig southeastward. You see that? And what that's going to do is that's going to push this front all the way into the Caribbean and the Southwest Atlantic as we go through tomorrow. So what will end up happening is then is that this front is going to increase the uh, upward motion in this area tomorrow, south of the front in here. So once that happens, I think these showers and thunderstorms, as they move near Jamaica, probably just to the south, you're going to get an increase in upward motion, and these showers and thunderstorms are going to strengthen. And this will be the beginning of this system getting uh, better organized uh, into a uh, eventually a tropical depression and a uh, tropical storm, then, then actually uh, a, a hurricane associated with this. Now, it's going over some very warm water. Let me show you that here. I want to show you this product. This is the uh, ocean heat content. So what you're looking at here is you are looking not only at the warm water, but the depth of the 80 degree warm water. How deep does it go into the ocean? And it, it's very deep in here, uh, especially south of Cuba, and that's where this system eventually is going to head. Also in the Gulf of Mexico, it's it's pretty warm as well, and it may go in this area, but, but initially, here's the big takeaway. The water is not only very warm in the Northwest Caribbean, it goes to a very large depth of the atmosphere. So in a sense, this is like rocket fuel, uh, rocket fuel for this system to get better organized. Now, there's going to be abundant moisture, that's not gonna be a problem. I want to talk about the shear then, so the wind shear, because we know once this system gets into this area, it'll be in here, But um, so water temperatures are warm enough, eventually it's going to get into Northwest Caribbean. But the only limiting factor with this system, as it typically is this time of the year, is wind shear. Is there going to be any wind shear that would stop this area from developing? And the answer, unfortunately, is going to be no. All right, let me let me show you what I'm talking about. I want to show you the uh, wind shear program right now. You know what I look at? I look at the winds at about 200 millibars. And now this is this evening, tomorrow morning. And by this time, this system is going to be moving here south of Jamaica as we get into Wednesday and Thursday. So this is Wednesday morning. You can see what's going on. You have this big upper high in here. So there's already pretty low wind shear in this area on Wednesday. Let's take it out in the Thursday. And again, here's Thursday morning. And uh, by this time, this is going to be right underneath this upper high. Here it is. So this is really going to start 
to to uh, organize on Thursday and Friday. I, you know, I was talking to our hurricane expert, Alex DeSilva, and he told me this would be a hurricane by Friday. It probably will be. Just given this, I mean, look at the, you, you've got an upper high in here, and this system is going to be located right in here. You have perfect ventilation for this. And as a result, I, I think this is going to go quickly. Even by Friday, the wind shear starts to increase a little bit here, and here's why. You've got this dip in the jet stream that's coming across the area. I'll show you that in a second. And what will happen is on Friday and into the upcoming weekend, as this area goes across the southwest Atlantic, the wind shear is going to increase just a little bit here. As we get into Friday and Saturday, you can see it just a little bit. It's 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 not all that strong, but you can see westerly wind shear all the way down toward Jamaica. And this system should be tucked south of that area. But I do think for a time this weekend, the wind shear in this area may increase just a little bit. Uh, let me take it out in the Sunday. And then what happens is once all of this energy in this, this trough, I'll show you in a second, leaves, you're going to see this big upper high start to build across the Bay of Campeche and then it moves to the uh, east as we get into early next week. And then as we get into Monday... Here we go. Here's where the system is located. All of the wind shear is way up over here and in the western Car uh, in the eastern Caribbean. And where this system is going to be tucked in, there will be no wind shear. So while there may not be much strengthening over the weekend, because I think there may be a little increase in wind shear, once this system gets into the northwest Caribbean, and that's going to be at some point Monday and Tuesday, there's no wind shear. None at all, and, 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 and even there is no wind shear in this area on Tuesday. And as I mentioned, not only do we have low wind shear here, but we also, by the time this system gets into the Northwest Caribbean, uh, again, it's, it's, it's going to get into this, this very tongue of warm water. So early next week, once this goes northward into Northwest Caribbean, this is really going to intensify. That's why we're very confident that this is going to end up becoming a major hurricane. All right. Now, the question is, is where is it going to go, right? Where is this going to go? Let me show you uh, what's going to be the steering influences here. I want to go right in here, and uh, we're going to draw a little bit here. Um, yeah, okay. Let me show you what we're going to do here. I'll take this. Let me take this fool in the here, go here. Okay. Let me show you what's going to what's going to happen in here as we go forward. Let me take this uh, graphic uh, full. Okay. So, here's the energy. You can see it um as we uh get in the Thursday. So, this is the energy. Remember it's going to be tucked here south of Jamaica. Again, there's no wind shear Thursday into Friday, so here it sits. Right? Uh, this is the American model. The European model is, is very similar. So it's going to sit here as we get into Thursday and Friday. Now, this is the way out. There was always a way out of any impacts for the United States. And there's kind of two of them right now. But the first one, it's a very minor chance. If I, I doubt it, it, I doubt it's going to happen. But there is a possibility if this trough in here was strong enough and came all the way down in here, and nothing shows that right now. What that would do is that would pick this system up and press it to the northeast, out to sea, and then no one has to worry about anything. I think that's less than a 5% chance. I really do. But you can see the influence that this system has on what will be a hurricane by the time we get into the weekend, if not Friday. Because let me play this forward. Watch watch the movement of this system as we get toward the latter half of the weekend over the upcoming weekend. Let me go back. So this is Thursday. You can see everything moving east. You see that? See how it's moving east? And then it starts to feel the trough. Watch Friday. It stalls, and then it moves just a little bit. You see that right in here? Just a little bit on Saturday. See how it moves just a little bit to the east? It's sensing this trough, but the trough is just not deep enough to pick it up pick it up, and move it out to sea. So it kind of stalls it, and then this trough leaves, right? It's gone um, by the time we move um, into uh, Saturday night, and then it's gone. So it, it left it behind. Then what we're doing is we're watching what other systems would steer it, and then we're going to start focusing on the upper high that builds across uh, Florida on Sunday. You see, here it is. Here's the upper high. Watch this. 
it's going to be building to the uh, east as we move into Sunday, Monday. You see it? So this is Monday, Monday morning. See, there it is. So then this becomes the primary steering on where this factor, where this is going to go. This will be the primary, and then this will be the secondary, this dip in the jet stream across the central United States. Now, remember, wind flow is clockwise around high, high pressure. So as we get into Monday, this should really start moving toward the Yucatan Peninsula. And then we have an interesting call to make. If this high stays here, stationary, this should drive it into the Yucatan Peninsula and into Mexico. I mean, that's what it would do. But a lot of the modeling, in, in, including the European, and I'll show you the European in a second, actually takes this upper high, right, and moves it away. And once you move it away, you change the steering flow from easterly to southeasterly, and that's what causes this system to turn, move toward Cuba, and eventually in the United, uh, toward South Florida. And you can see, watch the hype start to build. There it is. There's Monday morning. Watch that high then leave. So here's the high right in here. Watch that move as we get in the Monday evening and then Tuesday morning, and then it's gone. And now what happens is because the upper high moves over the Bahamas, you change the steering flow from east-southeast to due south. That's what turns this northward, and then it's going to start being impacted by this dip in the jet stream coming across the central United States. So what we'll end up doing is it'll go toward this trough like this and then turn as it feels the west-southwesterly winds from the trough. Remember, I expected this to happen to Rafael. Never did happen. It just got stalled. So it, you can take a look at this right in here. See, so watch the move. Watch the move. There it goes. Here comes the trough right? Here's the trough back in here to the west. This produces a west-southwest steering flow, and then this goes right into Florida as we get into Wednesday and Thursday as a major hurricane, well, at least a Category 2, if not a major. I mean, it would come plowing right across Florida, right near Fort Myers. All right. Now, European, a little different. That's the, that's the, America, uh, the European model. That was the American model. Same kind of idea the European. Let me let me move this up here. Same kind of idea, the European. I'm going to show you the U.S. view on it. See, it builds the high, right? Let me, uh, yeah, it builds the high here. Wait, do I have a better view of that? I do not. I thought I did. Okay. All right. This is the European model. And I want to show you, it's a little different viewpoint, but you can see the difference here. So this is what this does. Now, here we have, as we get in the Sunday, now here comes the high. Here comes the high, but this high is a lot stronger than the European, than the American model. This is the uh, European model. And this is, uh, let me go to uh, Monday morning for you so you could see it a little bit. We'll put that there. So this is the European model Monday morning. Right there. See where it has the high? It's across Florida. Just like the American model, but it's stronger. So you can see, look where the system is. It's way down here. Let me show you the, let me show you the difference. So this, this is the European. This is the American. You see the difference? The American model, not as strong with that high. So it's a lot farther north. Watch. American, European. You see how the Europe American model, not as strong with the high, so it allows it to come a little farther east. The European buries this system. Now, it still has a little bit of a turn, but watch the difference. Because it's stronger with that high, right, it buries it in the in the Mexico initially, and then it gets picked up by the trough. And it still comes across Florida, but it's a lot weaker and a little farther south. See, the American model stronger because it has the high weaker a little bit. There's 7 a.m. Tuesday. There's the American model. See where the high is? Over here, right? Watch the European model. See, it's stronger. It's stronger, so it has it farther west. Uh, a European, American. American, European. So the key is the strength of the high. This is what determines where this is going to go, the strength of this high. All right. So with that, let me show you a couple of things. This is going to become Sarah. It'll do so as early as Friday. This will become a hurricane by the weekend. And by early next week, if not before, this will be a major hurricane when it's in the Caribbean. 
Where's it going to go? I want to show you some kind of, uh, well, here's a little snapshot of what we're expecting over the next couple of days with this so you know what's coming. Okay, so this is going to organize Thursday and Friday. May become a tropical depression in here Thursday and Friday. By the time it gets to this area, Friday and into the weekend, this will be a named storm, and it's probably going to be a hurricane by Sunday. Could even be a major hurricane by Sunday, but I could see how that wind shear weakens it a little bit Saturday and Sunday from the trough, and then it really explodes early next week. But it's going to be a hurricane. I don't have any doubt about that. All right. I want to show you the scenarios here. There's many scenarios in here, but uh, these are, I think, two, two of the main ones. Now, we talked about the key to this movement is this <clears throat> upper high initially. If this high is stronger and it remains in place, there is a scenario this could get buried in the Central America. Now, even the European does bury it, but then does take it back out because eventually this high moves. But th the longer this high stays in place, the more likely... This would first get buried south, and then maybe it would take more of a southern track toward Cuba. So that, that's one scenario. The second scenario is, well, this high departs faster. It moves like this as we head into early next week. That produces what? A southeasterly a steering flow, which would take this first to the north. It would get in the eastern Gulf of Mexico, and then the dip in the jet stream would take it right into Florida. And quite honestly, I can't rule that out. I mean, climatology favors anything coming into the Gulf, anything in the Caribbean going towards South Florida. I do not believe, I don't believe, and you know what, I could be wrong. I don't believe this would be a concern from Tampa on north. This would be a concern more like in here. South of Tampa, probably Fort Myers on south, South Florida. And, and, and along the East Coast, all right? If it comes toward Florida, it would more likely do this, and it would probably be a hurricane. And the timing on this would be some point Wednesday into Thursday. So those are the two scenarios. I mean, right now, the preponderance of evidence suggests that this scenario or something similar to it, even if it's something like this and then like this or like this and like this, both of those scenarios would still bring impacts to South Florida and Cuba. So right now, the ponderance of evidence suggests that this is the more likely scenario than a track that would bury it into the Gulf, into, um, um, into the Yucatan Peninsula and into Belize. But I, I, I still can't rule this one out. It's early in the game. It's very early in the game. But the key is going to be this high. As I mentioned, how quickly does it move? And the quicker this moves... Early next week, the more likely it's going to take this turn and head toward Florida. You know, South Florida, you know, has, has missed out south of Fort Myers toward Naples and, and even toward Miami. I mean, you've, you've missed out on storms this year. Everything's been farther north. I mean, it's just during a hurricane season, the weather tends to go back to the medium, which means it may be South Florida's turn with this. It's early in the game. Let's keep an eye on it. But I have no doubt that this is going to be a hurricane. It will be a major hurricane, and we'll see about the scenarios, whether it gets buried in, in the Belize or into uh, the Yucatan Peninsula or comes into South Florida. It, it, the time framing on this would be mid to late next week, Wednesday, Thursday time frame. But it's going to be a hurricane. It will be Sarah, and it will, be the, uh, it will likely be another major hurricane that could really rapidly intensify over the weekend into early next week. Any questions or comments, you can follow me on X formerly known at Twitter. I'm at Accurano. Stay with us.